saying, I'm doing, I'm doing this hard work, creating something every time I do something. She said, no, baby, that's not the way to do it. You just move everything around so for you. So I sat there and watched her uh, put together the African Symposium. And that year, we was having a tough time uh, finding a sponsor for our luncheon. And I happen to have a company here with a lot of young, bright computer engineers and communication engineers. And we decided to host the luncheon at the old Pascal's. Everybody ate that good fried chicken. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that's what we did and that's what I've done. And as you can tell you, I was always way, way, way ahead of everybody. In the 90s, I had a, 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 a company that had a, it was called the Universal Trade Network, and it was promoted by the state of Georgia. It had 40 million people online doing trade online in the 90s. In the 90s. There was 25 servers. My network was bigger than what the internet is now. I mean, well, you know, it was the big thing then. <laughs> but anyway, uh, she, she told me, I, and I was telling her about the email and the databases, and back at that time, back at that time, remember I was doing facts and facts and facts. I said, you know, I could send you a book in a matter of seconds instead of you faxing stuff out. And uh, I, she said, baby, look, you're just too far ahead of us. You need to just come back, just come back and sit and watch and learn and learn the people and learn the things that they need to know and to be able to communicate with them because you're so far above their head. We, we, we don't have a clue what you're talking about. We don't have nothing what you're talking about. I said, okay, okay. I did that and I said, well, you can become my mentor and I'm just gonna sit and watch you. I'm just gonna shut up and I'm just gonna learn everything that you say and do everything you say and do. And that's what I did. But in the meantime, I still was going. Uh, in the 90s, I developed something called the Universal Trade, no, Bell World. I was bringing broadband internet to all black people in all metropolitan cities all over across America. But a company called Bell South said, no, we want to do that. So they stopped that. But anyway, like I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs>
Just a few minutes ago, I uh, asked uh, Dr. Bassi, I, I said, what is it that I'm going to uh, do, uh, what I'm going to say? Uh, because uh, Dr. Bassi was familiar with uh, a lot of other uh, deans, presidents of uh, Clark Atlanta Atlanta University, which was Atlanta University then. I just uh, came on board. Um, I am now the interim dean of the School of Business, about just a month. But I have been at Clark Atlanta University over 25 years. So there are something, uh, there are something that I know well and hope I will do well. And there are something that I'm still learning. Um, one of my learning was just about uh, Dr. Bassi and what she has done. Uh, so, my name is Mesfin Bazuna, and uh, on behalf of the, uh, our president, President French, who asked me actually to come and uh, uh, give a greetings on behalf of himself, uh, faculty members, students, the entire CAU community to pass greetings in honor of uh, Dr. Bassi. So I'm, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, um, let's see. Um, first of all, let me just tell you, I'm sure in the room there will be some uh, curious people. Uh, who, uh, who is this guy from? And uh, he has an accent. So let me just take care of that. Uh, I'm uh, from Ethiopia, right there. I just saw, I just saw Ethiopia, right there. I'm from Ethiopia. And... Uh, Grew up in Ethiopia, grew up here in Washington area, went to school in, in Virginia, did all my uh, graduate, undergraduate work in Virginia. So I have been here quite some time. But I'm uh, from Ethiopia. Basically, I'm an agricultural economist, uh, traveled many places as a consultant, wor working for the World Bank, United Nations, and uh, just so many uh, things I have done. And uh, I was at a professor at the University of Illinois, and my wife, uh, who used to be my girlfriend, <laughs> now my wife, she, she came to Emory University to go to school, and uh, I was given a choice, either I would follow her, <laughs> Well, you know the other, <laughs> the other part. So I chose to follow her. I came and got a job at Clark Atlanta University. So I have been there since, since then. So what I'm going to do briefly is uh, just give you a little bit background uh, and uh, where we are at Clark Atlanta University, the B School, which uh, uh, Dr. Bass is familiar with. It used to be Atlanta University, now it's Clark Atlanta University. So I just briefly, but uh, if I have some problem, I brought someone who has been with, with the university for a long time, working with Shelby and uh, the entire international program. Dr. Dali uh, Tamoy, uh, please. So she knows more about uh, Clark Atlanta University, the history, the, uh, the international program. So I have her here to, to assist. So what I will do, I'll just give you briefly where we are with uh, Clark Atlanta University and the School of Business. And then I'll spend a few minutes about this uh, Young Africa Leaders Initiative that President Obama uh, started in 2010. And I think that's a, that's a reason that uh, Dr. French um, asked that I come and uh, uh, make some remarks. Uh, so Clark Atlanta University today, we call it, uh, it actually uh, uh, came to being from two institutions, Clark College and Atlanta University. So in 1988, they merged. Uh, Atlanta University, basically a graduate 
uh, program. And Clark College was an undergraduate program. So towards the end of the 80s, there was some financial difficulties for both. So uh, Thomas Cole, the president, he had a vision. Uh, he brought them together in 1988. So that's now what we call Clark Atlanta University. So that's the uh, history of that uh, 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 United Front, which is really, we are much stronger today than uh, individual the Clark or uh, Atlanta University. Uh, and then now, uh, the School of Business, which I'm the interim dean, and that's what I'm working, I have been working, as um, uh, the history of that, uh, the B School was created, I was told, uh, in 1945, uh, 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 as a result of uh, uh, 45 HBCU presidents and leaders and businesses, they came uh, in a summit and uh, created this, uh, what we call the business school at Atlanta University. And it was, uh, since then, it has been one of the really uh, the best place to go to get MBA degree. Uh, in the 1940s and the 1950s, I'm sure most of you, more than I know, you guys understand, they couldn't go anywhere else to get a degree. So Atlanta University was a place to, to get a degree. MBA, graduate degree. The Spellman, the lady from Spellman, the boys from one house, they come together, they go to a graduate school right in the center. I don't know, most of you, if you know, Atlanta University is right in the center. Clark College on this side, Atlanta University is Penman here, Morehouse. It's a beautiful, beautiful uh, campus. So that's, uh, so the B school really uh, was the premier to, uh, to have the MBA, MBA program for a lot of African Americans. So today we have, uh, about 90 MBA students, about 800 uh, undergraduate uh, business students. Uh, so we are uh, really quite, quite good. Although uh, these days we get a lot of competition. Uh, Georgia State claims, in fact, they have more African American students than we do. Uh, but uh, we don't believe that. But, <laughs> so, um, And in fact, we are celebrating the 75th birthday of the School of Business the whole year. And the 2021 uh, started 22. I think in the, at the end of September, we're going to bring that to a conclusion. 75 years of B School, Business School. And one of the school I have to, yeah, thank you. And one of the things that uh, business school have done is actually a link, a strong link with uh, Atlanta Business League that you created of you. You really made a difference. So, yeah. So that's what we are with the School of Business. Now, because of this strength and, and the faculty member and the whole community of the Peace School, uh, we competed with a program called uh, Young African Leaders that uh, President Obama, he decided to do something for uh, countries in Africa before he left. He was there eight years. And one of the uh, things he initiated was this uh, called YALI, Young African Leaders Initiative. So, uh, that story, I just want to tell you in short, 2010 through 2013, uh, President Obama and, and, and uh, the First Lady, they brought uh, young ladies, young uh, men from Africa, from all over, just for, for uh, three weeks, and then send them all over Africa. So, but it was three weeks. So then when they, they went back, uh, these leaders, 
They said, we want this program to be expanded. Uh, we want it longer, we want it to be a lot more. So, in 2014, the White House instructed the State Department to develop this program and to expand it. And President Obama decided to bring uh, 1,000 for six weeks. So the question was, for what? So he, uh, he invited about, uh, I believe, seven, seven leaders from Africa. And uh, I happened to have a classmate working in the State Department. I did. And uh, that person invited me. And so I was in Reagan building where uh, this all happened with the seven leaders decided what it is to uh, bring these young leaders from Africa. So we were some of us sitting in the back and they identi identified three areas. Uh, business entrepreneurship, uh, civic engagement, and public management. Then, then how are we going to do that? So we, we bring them. But who's going to do what? So the decision was made that we're going to let the uh, universities of higher education in the US to develop the program in each of these areas. So this is the information, so I came back to Clark Atlanta. Got with uh, a lot of experts, uh, including Dr. Moye. So we wrote a proposal uh, to compete 2014. And I think I believe there was about um, 186 uh, universities competed. And uh, 20 institutions were selected. And uh, we were one of them. To do, to do, uh, to implement the business entrepreneurship track. So, to make the whole, the whole story short, since 2040, now it's 2022. We are still doing it for what nine years. But the thing about this is that uh, we apply every year. We compete every year. This is a congressional mandate. It has to be open, the competition, uh, to all the institutions. So uh, we must have done work with the B school. <laughs> so we are still there in it. So we are very happy. So we have now, um, uh, so 2014, to this time, we, we do it every year. We're competing every year. And uh, I have a wonderful staff, a lot of people from CAU School of Business, the faculty member, of course, Dr. Moye is right here. Uh, I'm not, I didn't uh, uh, do it alone. So we have close to 200 fellows. Uh, we are called, uh, I, I, have, I missed something. The 2015, uh, let me tell you about the 2015, that year in between. In 2015, uh, President Obama decided to name, to rename the program once the, the, these leaders come to this country in honor of uh, Nelson Mandela. So they are called today uh, the Mandela Washington Fellow, Fellowship. So that's what I actually called. So if they, if this fellow come to the U.S., they are called the Mandela Washington Fellows. But if they stay at, at home, which we have other program in Africa in every region, they are called the Young African Leaders Initiative. So, uh, so it's a very good program, and. 
I mean, we can spend, I can spend hours and hours showing you. We, I have, we have so much to, to show you. But the, the one of the things I want to address is that once they get him, what do you do for them? Uh, we get them for six weeks, and each institution, today we have 27 uh, uh, institutions. Each one of us get 25 fellows. So what do we get them? When we pick them up from the airport, and we have to actually do everything for them for six weeks and then put them back to the airport. It's very intensive. What do we do? We do three things to, uh, for them. We have academic training in a classroom. We have community service. Once a week they go to community service. And we have experiential learning. In other words, if we lecture these people about anything, we take them to that area with the institution. And our partners, uh, UPS, Coca-Cola, IBM, the Atlanta Airport, um, what else, other, uh, so? The Med, Med International, yes. And the uh, food bank, the Atlanta Food Bank. And we, we get them, we expose them to the entire um, activities of community service. That's what we do, uh, and, and we have so many stuff to show you, a uh, demonstration. So at the end of that uh, six weeks, uh, they, we usually go to Washington, so these fellows actually meet with the leaders, with the congressional leaders, the, the uh, uh, business uh, corporate partners. It's a big deal for them. And then they go home, and, and then after that, they, they become an alumni, and they stay in touch with us. And, uh, and, and so the program is a, it has such a big goal, and it's the most impactful that uh, I have seen in my life. It impacts these this young uh, men and women. And one of the things interesting, they, the, uh, uh, Obama and Michelle Obama, they both say it has to be 50-50. So the gender is 50-50. That's how we, we do. So we train both uh, female and male. Uh, what else can I say about uh, Yadi, uh, Danita? Would you like to add some, uh, would you like to come up and say something, add some more? That, that they don't hear you. They say they don't hear you.
What are they? They are really the best of the best to begin with. So, I have three examples for you. These three, uh, this, uh, three, how could I do that? Uh, if, if, if the first one, Fatima Ibrahim, she was from Nigeria, from the northern part. This is before she is elected. She, this lady, Morenga, she collects, she collects all these unemployed women and they start actually planting, cutting moringa and they start pressing and getting an oil from moringa seed and she starts selling them and making some of these women, about 100 women before she got selected, were actually selling and making them sell for land in her community. And then this uh, Kenneth Eric from Kenya he took a, a banana, just a green banana, created a machine to slice this green banana, dried it, and make cereal, and start exporting and selling other cereal to Kenyans, and then start exporting to China. I, I believe he was 24. By the way, the age limit is between 25 and 35. That's age. Huh? And, and, and then the last one uh, from Ghana, she, she, she created a mobile toilet to take it to the urban, to rural area and renting it to those who do not have in, indoor uh, plumbing. So these are the type of people who are already have in their background to be selected to come. So the bar is high, it's very high. And this is a young man just walked in uh, from uh, 2017. 2017. That, that he works uh, uh, with Mr. Allen. Uh, Olá, 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 How are you? How are you? <laughs> yes, of course. Please. <laughs> All right. Good. Good. Um, good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Nice to see your beautiful faces. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm from Nigeria. My name is Olorade. Um, I was a 2017 Mandela Washington Fellow um, at Park Atlanta with uh, Dr. Dalita and uh, Dr. Pezuna. And um, I'm back. I've been back a few times after that. I think this will be my third or fourth time being back in the US. Uh, and I'm doing a bunch of things with Mr. Allen here at the New Black Wall Street Market. Right. <laughs> 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 OK, 
Okay, I'm from Nigeria. I live in Abuja, but I was originally born in Hong Kong State. We're well, living in Abuja. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I just. Uh, Thank you.